Good afternoon. Here's a little profile. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is time for noonday prayer. Noonday prayer. And so I'm going to explain a little bit before I get started. Um, and my PPK, Peace, Prophet, and King, is my pop, Gerald would say. He is home. So in a few minutes, he's going to come in as well as my son. But I'm going to share a little background of how this assignment came about. I'll take these boots from over here before they fall. So um, a couple of weeks ago, um, I had a dream. This dream was very, very disturbing. The dream was very, very horrific. And um, I'm going to share it because you may be be able to get more out of it. Hey, Sakana, thank you. Um, so in this dream, me and Joseph were were uh, walking down this long road. It, it's almost like the road was like a country type of road. And as we were walking down this road, who help me, Holy Spirit. Mm. As we were walking down this road, they were different types of uh, nationality of men. The ages range look like early 20s to like uh, late 30s or early 30s. They were young boys. Look like they just got out of high school. Some of them looked like they were in college. And so in the dream, they were, they were black, white, Asian, uh, Mexican, all different types of nationalities. So as me and jo Joseph was walking, I don't know, I can't remember, we were walking or driving. But as we were going, I began to see these men. And these men were Caucasian men. And God, and, and they began to round up these boys. These boys were crying. They were, were wanting to get away. And, and, and immediately, the Lord reminded me of the slavery mentality principality that is over hi hi sis the, the slavery mentality and principality that is over this nation and so they were rounding these boys up they were crying they were pleading for their life thank you and when i share this y'all it's so It's so horrific that I have to share with you because I want you to understand how important it is to pray for our men. Whether the husbands, sons, no matter what the nationality is, no matter the age, it's so important that I tell the, the whole concept of this dream so you can have an understanding. And so in the dream, they were rounding up these boys and they were putting them if you've ever seen a, a slavery movie, they would handcuff from a time to a rope. But they had this hook, this 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 hook type thing. It was kind of curved like this. And they were taking it and they were shoving it up their anal parts. Did y'all hear what I said? Each and every young boy that they captured, they were doing that to them. And... I was looking and I was holding on to my son. And after they did all of that, they would dress them up. And I said, okay, God, what, what's going on? They would dress the, dress the boys up. And so we, we went on and I was holding on to Joseph. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I was holding on to my I was holding on to my son. And as we began to walk up the road, I could see men from... Uh, I don't know if I was driving or walking. I think sometimes I was driving and sometimes I was walking. And I began to see men, for, men from and boys from miles and miles away. They were tied up. They were dressed up. And they were tied to ropes. And they and it's always they, they were being gathered like cattle. And I remember going to this house and telling this young lady, I said, they're taking our men. She looked at me while I was holding my son and she said, oh, they only told me they were going to take two or three. And I looked at her like, 
you supporting this mess? And she said, y'all go inside, get you some nuts. And, and so when I went inside, there were a lot of kids in there, but there were no men. And so as they, I, I, I began to hear in the spirit, in the dream that they were coming closer. And so I got Joseph and we went and hid up under the Ebe Kasson Ramamasia. We went and hid up under the house. And when I, when we hid up under the house, I could see some kind of way those boys had gotten free. They were running through the fields like a large field. And they were running and trying to get away. And when I woke up, and I remember I, I recorded the dream and I wrote down what the Lord was saying. And um, I apologize. I'll come at later and explain the three things that it, that the Lord showed me in the dream. But God told me, he said, I need you even the more. I know you pray for your husband and I know you pray for your sons, but I need you even the more to pray for the men. This spirit that has reigned in our earth, has, has, has reigned long enough. God showed me three things in this dream. And y'all may be shocked and y'all may not be shocked. But the one thing that he showed me that was very significant, as we as women have offered our men up as sacrifices, we have opened the door for our men to be to, to be cattle. And this is a part of the dream I forgot to mention. There was a little boy in the dream. And he asked to go to, a, go to the store. We were in the house. And when he went to the store, he went and, and it, God allowed me to follow him in the spirit to where he was going. And he went up to this man and he held his hands up like, I want to be taken too. And so I asked God, what was that? What is that? God said, this world... Our homes, even our churches, have allowed our young boys to think it is okay to be something that they are not. Whether it's homosexuality, whether it's insecurity, whether it's, 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 it's low self-esteem, we have set, we have set the playing field and said it's okay to do this. It's okay to be this way. And God showed me because this mindset that has happened over the last years or so for women to say, oh, I don't need a man. I can take care of myself. I don't need a man's money. I can do this for myself. God created Adam first. God created Adam as a protector. And God showed me even last night. He said when Eve went and, and, and ate the fruit, she showed her husband, I don't need to follow your instructions. I don't need to listen to you. This LGBTQ, and this may get cut off, and I don't care. But I'm going to keep saying it. Yeah, that's my soul. This LGBTQ agenda, we don't worry about certain things until it hits our home. But I'm telling you all, we better pray. We better intercede and stop praying for your husband. And just because he's your husband, pray for his soul. Pray for his mind to be saved. Because even if God did not restore my marriage, my goal is for my husband to be saved, for my husband to be delivered, for my husband to be set free. God said, when that woman said, oh, they were only going to take three men, that let me know right then and there that we got to get out of this attitude, oh, you do me and I'll do, I'll do, uh, you, I'll do me and you do you. That's how some of us have gotten and waiting for our husbands to get to the place that they need to be or our sons or our uncles or our grandparents. We get so tired and so uh, uh, impatient. And I was talking to a young lady the other day that said she didn't want to pray for her spouse anymore, that she just felt like getting a divorce was the only option. But God reminded me, somebody had to pray you out of your mess. But we have these time limits on our spouses. And God said, enough is enough. If I had completely gave up on my husband, even after he got the, we got divorced and he married several times. A lot of people don't know our full stories. I married again. But God said, go back. 
That is not your husband. Get out of that relationship. Pray for him. I could feel y'all from the time I, I married somebody else. God would never let me stop dreaming about Nick. He said, you are going to hell if you don't get your life right. And so many times we are stuck in this place where we feel like everything is about us. Some of us, when we talked about, we have made our husbands out of idols. We have made our sons out of idols. We have said, God, if I don't have this, I won't be able to live. I won't be able to breathe. That is why you're going through what you're going through because your assignment first is to be a help me. Your assignment first is to intercede. So when God showed me that dream, I had to repent again. Because it lets me it let me know that I had not been praying enough. It let me know that I had not, I had been selfish because yes, I do pray for my husband. I do pray for my sons. But God began to show me all different types of people, all different types of, of men. And so um, this is my PPK right here. I told him it's not by co coincidence that he was here. This is the first day of the assignment of me praying for our kings. But I told him to come in and I told my son to come in because I am going to anoint their head. Because God said to pray for their mind, to pray for the mind of the men today, to pray for the mind for, for our uncles for our young boys, for our, for, our, for, our, for, our, for our grandparents, in the name of Jesus, for our grandfathers, and for each and every person that represents a male to anoint their head and pray for their mind. Take it. They will not be taken. And I got somebody calling me, and it's only an interruption because of what's getting ready to take place. So I encourage you, ladies, to shift your atmosphere. So I'm going to stand up and get ready to pray. I'm going to anoint his head, and I'm going to anoint my, my son's head as a representation of covering our men today. And I'm going to lay hands on them. I'm, I'm not the priest of this home, but he is. And I declare that our homes will be restored in the name of Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. As I stand, oh God, as your maid servant, I lay hands on my husband, oh God, and I lay hands on my son as a proxy, oh God, for all the men that are over this world, over this nation, over this country, in the name of Jesus, oh God. I declare and decree, oh God, that they shall have the might of Christ, oh God. I declare and decree, oh God, that they will walk like you, talk like you, oh God. They will go what you have called them to go, oh God. God, I snatch back, oh God, their mind from the hand of the enemy. I declare and decree, oh God, that they have a sound mind in the mighty name of Jesus, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, oh God. For they are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, oh God. God, I declare that wives and sisters, oh God, and mothers will speak, oh God, good things into them, oh God, that they will declare, oh God, they are mighty men of valor, oh God, mighty men of strength, oh God, mighty men of war, oh God. We will not, oh God, speak, oh God, against their headship. We will not, oh God, speak against God, their authority. We will not, oh God, but God, we will declare, oh God, that they are great and mighty, oh God. They are the priests, the prophets, and the kings of this home, of the nations, oh God. God, we step out of our unrighteousness, oh God, and we move into righteousness, oh God. God, I thank you, God, that everything that the enemy has set up for evil, oh God, you are turning it around. You are turning it around for their good, oh God. I thank you right now, oh God, God, that they will begin to see like you see, hear like you hear, oh God, pray like you pray, oh God. I thank you right now, even as babies come out the womb, I declare, oh God, that they will have, oh God, a mind like you, oh God. So God, as women, we perfectly line up, oh God. I thank you for new tongues of fire that when they step on their jobs, when they walk in the stores, when they go in the doctor's office, that the atmosphere shifts because of their presence, oh God. Because the Holy Spirit, oh God, is 
in them walking, moving, breathing, oh God, that they may shangle them my side. God, we repent, oh God, for the things that we have said as women, as wives, and help me, oh God. Brighter our tongues, oh God, and allow us, oh God, to be sweet, to be encouraging, oh God, to be compassionate, oh God. God, we speak over their minds right now, oh God, because we know what blow to their mind equals death, oh God, so we speak life. They shall not die, but they shall live, oh God. We bite up and we tear and rip to shred that homosexual spirit, that lesbian spirit that will cause them to walk contrary to the word. God, restore them back to their homes, oh God. Give them a mind to be present spiritually, naturally, and physically, oh God. We thank you, oh God, and we give you praise, oh God. Thank you. Yenna ba shon roma ma ma sandre. Yandre be ka son roma ma shendre be ka ya. Yandre ke shon roma ma so yere na la ba ko ya. Yandre be shendre be ma so yere na la ba so tre ke. Yandre roma ma ma shendre be ka son re be be sia. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for healing, oh God, from past wounds, oh God. I thank you for healing, oh God. From misunderstandings, oh God. I thank you for healing, oh God. Every word curse is broken over our men in the name of Jesus. No more slavery. No more slavery of the enemy. God, but they are walking in your presence, walking in your truth, and walking in your life. We give you praise, God, and we seal this prayer over our men. By the blood of Jesus, there will be no backlash, no retaliation, but they will rise in authority, rise in confidence, rise in healing, rise in breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Every strange woman, Mama Shondroba. Every strange whispering woman, Yadrebekaya. We command you to loose your hold on our men, on our husband, Yandabekashe. Yandro Mama Sondro Mama Sia. Circumcise their eyes and their ears, oh God, that they will hear, oh God, only the frequency of the Holy Spirit. We speak life over our men. Life more abundantly, oh God. Yandre kebe shandro mama mama sonre keba. Yandre kebe shandro mama mama shandre bebe kia. Yandre be ka sonro mama sonre keba suye. Yandre ke shandro mama mama shandro baba suya. God, every uncle, every father, every grandfather, yan baba so. Every son, every husband, oh God. We speak deliverance over them right now. God, they will have authority. They will know it and they will walk in assurance. We will not tear them down. We will not hand them over to the enemy. But God, we will pray them and press them into the presence of God. Our words shall be sweet as honey. God, we will be slow to speak and swift to hear, oh God. What your spirit is saying to us, oh God, to lead our husbands, to pray for them, to cover them, oh God, even if they're not comforting and leading God. The Bible says, by the conversation of the wise, that they may be saved, God. I hope I apologize if I, if I butcher that up, but I'm thinking about the scripture that is not about the adornment, but it's the conversation that we can win our husbands over without a word. I remember four years ago, I printed out this, 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 this prayer and it had on there uh, things to pray over my husband. You take your name and you would assert your husband's name in it. And I remember that is the day I began to shift. And I remember God, and I was laying on the floor, and my face was on the, and I was telling the Lord I was so tired, and I, I, I just wanted to give up. And God told me, he said, you put your face to the floor. 
And when I put my face to the floor, the Lord said, you see, what do you see? I said, God, I see nothing. He said, that's right. He said, when your husband said something that he shouldn't say or do something that he shouldn't do, I want you to say nothing and hear nothing. He said, pray for him. Pray for him. Pray for him. He said, it's not what you want. He said, but it's about what I want. A lot of times we think that everything is about us. Every time we do, sometimes we think that everything is about what we want and how we want things to be. God said the wife was made, the help me was made for the husband. And if you look back in Genesis, it says that their, 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 their desire shall always be for him. But we got to check our own desires. We have to check why are we so discombobulated? Why are we shifted? When things don't go right, what we should be doing is shifted into a place of proactive prayer. A prayer not when something is going wrong, but a prayer when everything is going right. Because when I tell you the enemy does not sleep, if he can come to you in your dreams, you know he ain't sleeping. But I thank God for the prophetic anointing on my life. I never understood why God dealt with me as he dealt with me as a child. I never understood why I would see things and why he had me not being in a popular crowd. He said, because in this time and season, you're going to have to do some things that are not about you. You're going to have to do some things that are not about, about what you want and how you feel. But it, it is about what God wants and how God feels. We have lost too many of our men to this world. And it's time for us to rise up. God saved us so we can be saviors of others. Our husbands, our sons, our fathers, our brothers, our uncles, our grandfathers. When they see us, they should see God. The Bible says he created us in the image of God and unto his likeness. And that's why my business, which I'm getting ready to launch, has already been in operation for a while. It's called Restore My Treasures. Because God said he has so many treasures in the earth that has been lost. Whether it has been given over to the enemy or whether it's been, been snatched by the enemy. No matter what it is, God wants everything restored back to his original plan. In Genesis 1 and 31 where he said everything that he made was very good. Very good. Our health was very good. We had instructions on what to eat. Even when it comes down to your PPK, when you pray for it, when you fix his food, pray over his food. Pray over it. That ain't witchcraft. You want your, your spouse to be healthy. And so God began to show me that this, this agenda that is rising up in the earth with these laws. I, I, I'm not a politician, but God has allowed me to start paying attention it is not just about the presidential election. It's about the Congress. It's about the lower level as well. But more so, ask the Lord what principality is over your nation. God allowed me to discover that one of the main strongholds over our nation is division. And we can see that because many of our families are divided. And, and a lot of them on the name of Jesus. So we have to get to a place where we're operating fully how God wants us to operate without second guessing, without wondering, without having any books and God, what if this? Do what God says. says. It's not by chance the first day of this assignment, my husband was home. I didn't even know he took off. I, he come jumping on the bed to my surprise. I said, yeah, it is a surprise. But God knew that this, 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 the start of this prayer needed his presence. 
And even though he did not pray, I didn't even know what I was going to pray about. And God began downloading things this morning. He said, pray over their mind. Lay, ask your husband to lay hands. And he had all the time, I ain't doing no live. I said, baby, I just need you to come in here and stand proxy for all the men. Boys, all the boys, the, the fathers, the, the husbands, the, every nationality. It's not just about one uh, culture. But it's all of our cultures. Because in that dream that I shared at the beginning of this live, they were taking all of them. But I thank God that he gave a way of escape. So I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that your Holy Spirit will rule, reign, and rest upon each and every person that shares this life, that likes this life, that even sees a second of this life. God, I decree and declare that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, for they are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that your hand is upon them and it shall not be removed. God, I thank you, Lord God, that they won't move to the left or to right, but God, they will obey your instructions, oh God, and you will give them clear insight and understanding what you are desiring for them in this hour. God, I thank you that every man is covered on this live. Every brother, every son, every father, every husband. Oh God, every grandfather, every uncle, in the name of Jesus, that you're shifting them into their rightful place in you, oh God. And God, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that rests on you, that rests on us. And we can do great and mighty things for the kingdom of God. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. I seal this prayer and this assignment with the blood of Jesus that no backlash and retaliation will come. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So thank you all for tuning in. This is the first of many assignments that God um, has me. Um, God's told me every Friday. I don't know if it'll be at 12 o'clock. I will try. Um, will be prayers over our men. Um, he wants me and you to be intentional about praying for our men. Um, I mean, <laughs> when I think about that dream, and hopefully um, next Friday I'll come back with more of that, of some of the points that the Holy Spirit gave me about the dream. But I'm telling you, we cannot afford to lose any of our men when I tell you it hurt me so bad that this young boy voluntarily went up to be taken. When you see stuff like that, it's a problem. And and that says that someone has okayed it to be a certain way that God did not ordain it. We have to teach our kids, our young boys, and our women what is right. We have to rise up, and even if it costs our job, I'm I'm I, I I'm at a place now that I know possibly I may lose my job because I'm getting ready to stand up for righteousness. But God said I will take care of you, and I trust His plan. I trust His plan for my life, and so I love you all. If you're led, like and share. Um, again, I am getting ready to launch my. My um, business, I already launched and I already restored my treasures, LLC, where I am doing trainings for intercession, training for prophetic, even um, doing some marriage encouragement. If you're interested, inbox me. Um, marriage, uh, marriage encouragement sessions are case-by-case -case basis because I know I'm not called to, to, to train everybody in their marriage. But I'm already doing intercession training, prophetic training. And so even um, um, healing, healing encouragement sessions. And so I encourage you all to pray for your husband. Pray for your men. Um, and look at them not in a place of, when I, when I started praying for my husband from the spirit of compassion and that he had a soul, it came to be more like, intentional. Because I wasn't praying out of a place of I wanted him to get it right because of me. But I realized that it was about his soul being saved. And so when I pray for him now, it's, it's a whole different shift. Because my heart is for souls. My heart is, That's what God's heart is for. And so I love you all. And I will see you all next Friday in Jesus' name.
Have a blessed day.